No weapon formed against you will prosper. And how many of you know that there are times in your life where you feel up against the wall and you just feel like you have no hope left? But when you place your hope in Jesus, everything will turn out for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. It may not always turn out the way you want, but God is good all the time. No weapon formed against you will prosper. How's it going out there? We would like to invite. Go ahead and start again. Hi, I'm Doris, and this is my husband Will. Hey, how's it going out there? We'd like to invite you to Easter service online at Perimeter Point Church. Yeah, it's going to be an awesome time. In fact, we have four different opportunities for your family to connect. We're going to have three services online for the kids and one live service for the whole family. Yep. Anything else? <laughs> well, I was going to say, you probably want to check out Facebook to get the information or our website, PerimeterPoint.org. But all I want to know is, can you make it? Good evening. I want to welcome you to our Good Friday service. We're really grateful that you're here with us today. I want to encourage you to gather your families um, into this space where you are in your living room or your kitchen, wherever you might be and uh, bring the family together for this um, time of worship, this time of celebration, this time of reflection. Um, this is a time where there really is a, a reason to celebrate. I know that the occasion itself um, can bring about heaviness in our hearts when we reflect on what took place on this day that we call Good Friday. 
but there really is a reason that is called Good Friday. My hope is that through this gathering that we have today, there will be times of maybe sadness as we reflect on what it took for us to be connected rightly with God, our Heavenly Father, um, but also times of, of feeling gratitude and feeling joy at what has been done for us and the price that has been paid for us. So I wanna invite you again, not only to bring your family together, but can I encourage you, whether you're viewing this on our YouTube platform or our Perimeter Point Church platform, there's an opportunity on both of those for you to share. I would really like to encourage you to even click share now and get the word out so that others can be joining us in this live experience. Something that came to mind to me today as I was getting ready for this Good Friday service was a devotion that I read. It's one I read just about every morning by a man named Oswald Chambers. And the title of the devotion was, Have I Seen Him? And a couple of sentences just stood out. It says, being saved and seeing Jesus are not the same thing. Many people who have never seen Jesus have received and share in God's grace. But once you have seen him, you can never be the same. And what I want you to get from that is, obviously we know that every single person who follows Jesus Christ has to come to know him personally. That's the beauty of the Christian faith, is that it's not about religion, it's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. But what Oswald Chambers is trying to say is that there are a lot of people whose heart is going to be pricked and who's going to come to, to trust Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins. But even as we look in the Gospels, and even as perhaps you and I look in our own lives, there are many who have received the grace and goodness of God through Jesus Christ and know they're going to heaven. But then there are those that really see him for who he is. Not just that come on Sunday, maybe come to Good Friday service, check it out for a few minutes. But I want us to approach this time together to where we really see him for who he is, which means I hope you'll put aside the distractions. I hope that you'll really try to ask God, you know, show me more of yourself. Let me have an encounter with you, not just today and not just in this moment, but every day, because there is a difference between someone who is truly seeing Jesus and someone who is only saved by Jesus. Being saved is absolutely essential, Seeing him is a, where the journey really takes flight and really gets deepened in our lives. Let's have a word of prayer. God, I just thank you so much for this time that we have together. I thank you for what this day represents. Um, it is a sad occasion that we are reflecting upon, but it is also a day where we are looking ahead to what it represents, all that is accomplished, and it brings us joy in our hearts. I pray for every person that is watching this video. If there might be some that are contemplating a relationship with Jesus, maybe even just exploring the truth claims of the Bible, I pray that something that is said or done would draw them closer to you, God, and that you will receive glory in this time that we have together. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to encourage you, um, as we are getting ready to participate in Holy Communion, that uh, you understand that this is what is also known as the Lord's Supper, and it is an ordinance that's given to all believers in Jesus to gather together on certain occasions. No particular time is recorded in Scripture. It just says, as often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of Christ in Him. And it symbolizes our faith and trust in the new covenant of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection for the forgiveness of our sin. The elements that are used for communion, the bread symbolizing Jesus' body, and the wine or juice, or in my case, I'm even using water, symbolizing Christ's broken body and shed blood. These are what are used in this Last Supper or Lord's Supper. Now, let me also emphasize that communion is not a means of salvation, but rather it is a testament of a believer's faith in the atoning work of Christ on the cross. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, 
join us online to remember this great sacrifice in just a few minutes. If you're not in a place where you've trusted Christ or consider him your savior, then we just want to invite you to sit back and enjoy this and take it all in and uh, let us know even in those chat boxes if you have any questions. Uh, I'd love to speak with you personally about exploring faith in Christ. So right now, what I want to do is ask everyone, if you have not already done so, go get yourself um, some bread, some crackers, uh, whatever you can use to symbolize uh, what we'll use to represent the body of Christ. In my case, I literally just took a piece of bread and also bring some juice. Uh, in my Lutheran church tradition, we could uh, we actually use real wine. That's what was used in Jesus's day. Um, but whether it's water or wine or juice, um, we invite you to bring that as well. These are symbols, again, as I mentioned. So if you don't have those like I do right here, take a minute to go do that now. And those that already prepared uh, to bring those things, I do have a few announcements I want to give you. The first thing I want to let you know is that Easter is just around the corner. And we need your help to spread the word about the services that we're going to have. If you look at our Facebook page, you look at our website, you look at Instagram and Twitter, it's all over the place about the four different services that we have for entire families and their children. Would you please do us a favor and share like crazy with your family and friends about these online opportunities for people to uh, celebrate and worship our risen savior on that special day. I also want to let you know as a church family that we are still gathering every morning and every evening at 714 to pray in relationship to this COVID-19 virus. We are praying for everyone involved. We are praying for God to eradicate this virus from the earth. We are praying for individual needs. It is important for us to continue to faithfully gather in prayer, and we invite you to that. If you'd like the call-in information, just enter in the chat box a request, and one of our team members will reply back with everything you need. And also, we are going to be starting a Bible study. Uh, it is called Living Victoriously in Difficult Times. Anybody need to learn to live victoriously in difficult times? It's right here, and we'll have you uh, join with that if you'd like. Enter the chat box as well. We can get you more information about the Zoom online study that we'll be doing. And the last thing I want to encourage you to do is I want you to consider supporting this ministry financially. I've got a story for you that took place this week. We had a, a young man who we placed ads for about four months on Facebook. And uh, we had about 70,000 views on our videos that were inviting people to submit prayers and about 3,000 people that we prayed for individually with audio prayers sent to their messenger accounts. Of those individuals, we had seven that have received Christ as Lord and Savior, three suicide attempts that were averted, and countless others whose prayers were answered. Uh, we had a situation this, this last week that a man who had joined us through Facebook prayer and now is even closer in uh, a part of our church through our group me chat app, he has... Um, since started to be in regular communication with us. We do daily chat encouragement and uh, we're, we're just in more contact as a church family where he, he reached out and said something on our, our chat that had us all a little bit concerned about him this week. He was really going through a very difficult time. And would you know our entire church family started chatting with him and encouraging him with prayers and, and they were so concerned. I, I had fallen asleep, it was in the late at night my my text was blowing up. My phone was blowing up. I had people saying, did you hear what this person was saying? We want to make sure he's okay. Well, we were so happy to find out that he was just going through a real rough night and he's doing much better and we're walking with him day by day. But this is what we're having an opportunity to do is to reach people's lives, thousands, and make personal connections like we've done with this young man. But it is only possible with your support. In fact, for $30 a day, we place our Facebook ads. For $500 a month, we pay for the consultant that's been running our ads. Um, and also when we were doing this, we realized people needed transportation. So we were able to um, get a professional insured transport service to discount their services to us so that every Sunday we can bring people to church and also provide them with meals. Uh, we provide groceries for anyone who needs them on Sunday mornings. These are some things that we're doing to love our neighbor. 
And these are some things that we can't do without support like yours. So at the end of this service, there's going to be a slide that pops up and it's going to show you the different ways that you can give to this ministry. And also, uh, if you look at the top right hand corner of the church online uh, platform, you'll see that there's three ways you can just click and give there as well. We thank you so much for your contributions. Now, let me let me just ask you the question. What is so good about Good Friday? Well, let's take a look at this video and find out. Good Friday. How can one describe such a day? The wrongdoing of all humanity putting to an end an innocent man, the Son of God. This is the story of Jesus' death by way of a cross, all in one moment bringing death to the bright light of our future. He never stopped loving us, and yet this is the incredible part of it. Our sin stopped his heart. Our sin drove the nails firmly in the hands of God. All along, these were the plans. We told ourselves that we were in control, and this was deemed sufficient for all of us. The brutal beating, the inhuman flogging, the naked humiliation. Heaven watched and saw it all. Our rebellion, our guilt, our shame, erasing the very notion of reconciling us with God. Our sin and our debt, overcoming. Jesus. Here is our king, obliterated. The enemy laughing, his plans unstoppable. There's no longer the sound of freedom rising. Now God's people are utterly broken. Behold the chains of mortality. Yes, this is what is true. We had heard the stories of old. The lost are found, the blind can see, the weak are made strong. But now, we are witnesses to this reality. God is dead. We'd almost believed there is a way of redemption. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a peace beyond understanding. Now we know better. For us, we can say that God is encapsulated in this one realization. The single greatest sacrifice in human history is finished. How clearly we can see it. So what's so good about Good Friday? Just one thing, that the blood of Jesus can reverse the curse of sin and raise the dead to life. How clearly we can see it is finished. The single greatest sacrifice in human history encapsulated in this one realization. We can say that God is for us. Now we know better. There is a peace beyond understanding. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a way of redemption. We had almost believed God is dead, but now we are witnesses to this reality. The weak are made strong, the blind can see, the lost are found. We had heard the stories of old, yes, this is what is true. The chains of mortality utterly broken, behold freedom rising. Now God's people are unstoppable. There's no longer the sound of the enemy laughing, his plans obliterated. Here is our King, Jesus overcoming our sin and our debt, reconciling us with God, erasing the very notion of our rebellion, our guilt, our shame. Heaven watched and saw it all, the naked humiliation, the inhuman flogging, the brutal beating, and this was deemed sufficient for all of us. We told ourselves that we were in control all along, these were the plans firmly in the hands of God. Our sin drove the nails, our sin stopped his heart, and yet this is the incredible part of it. He never stopped loving us. The bright light of our future all in one moment, bringing death to death, 
by way of a cross. This is the story of Jesus, the Son of God, an innocent man putting to an end the wrongdoing of all humanity. How can one describe such a day? Good Friday. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we are so grateful. We are so grateful for your love, for your mercy, for the forgiveness that we have received. We thank you for willingly laying your life down on our behalf. We thank you for willingly suffering an unthinkable, agonizing death on our behalf and for our sin. We thank you for how much you loved us to be willing to do that. And Father, we thank you for willingly giving your son and allowing him to endure such suffering and to even be separated from him for a time when you, the word says, turned your back on him and allowed him to suffer all of the wrath that we deserved, all of the judgment that we deserved, all of the torment that we deserved because of our rebellion. He bore all of our sin. He took all of that. And he took away all of our guilt and our shame. And we are so thankful as we gather together around this table virtually in all of our homes, all of our families, we just say thank you. And now as we participate in Holy Communion, if there's anything in our hearts that may get in the way of us participating in this with a clean heart, with a heart of worship and true gratitude, would you please forgive us for any sins? May we even pause now and quietly confess in our heart our sins to the Father. And Father, we are so grateful that 1 John 1 and 9 says, If we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We thank you for that love and that kindness that you've bestowed upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 23 says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread, and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Well, it was there in that upper room where the Lord Jesus gathered his disciples. And even now you can see yourself, because of your faith in Christ, as one of his disciples, who he longs to gather around the table with you, even right now. He longs to be as if you are right there in the midst with those other disciples, wanting you to know and reflect upon his love for you. Greater love has no man than this, than a man would lay down his life for his friends. And every one of you gathered around the table right now who love him and have accepted him and the forgiveness of your sins, he has called you friend. And so Jesus gathered with his disciples and he took bread and he gave it to each of his disciples and he broke it. And he said, take and eat. Now, if you and the quietness of your home or with your family, if each of you reflecting on what this bread represents, the broken body that was beaten and bruised 
for our sin, that was killed, sacrificed for our sin. If you will repeat after me, as I shall eat this bread, I am reminded of Jesus' body that was sacrificed for our sins. Let us eat and be thankful. And likewise, Jesus passed the cup. The cup was crimson in color, symbolizing the, the blood that would be shed for our sins. Jesus emphatically declares, without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sin. Think of your life, think of my life, and all the different ways that we have offended God, that we have turned from God, that we had violated his commands, and yet and still, he shed his blood and he died for you and I. So if you repeat after me, as I shall drink the fruit of the vine, I am reminded of Jesus' blood that is shed for my sins. Let us drink and be thankful. I'm going to pray a prayer before we close our service today in song, and it is a part of a community of over 2,000 churches that are praying regularly, 7.14 a.m. and 7.14 p.m., for God to have mercy on our land, to er eradicate the COVID-19 virus, and to also draw all of us to himself more fully through this crisis. Let's pray. Today, with millions of Christians around the world, we have remembered your death, Lord Jesus, we have remembered it through the power of communion. We have humbled ourselves and freshly confessed our sins. It is through your redemptive work we can boldly approach the throne of grace to help us in our time of great need. The COVID-19 pandemic is wreaking havoc on our world. We boldly come before you today, Heavenly Father, asking that you deliver and heal our nations. Even as the people of Israel were protected by the blood of Passover lambs in the time of Moses, we ask you to protect our nations through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Passover lamb. We realize our nations have sinned against you. We ask for your forgiveness and protection. As your people, we willingly identify with the sins of our nation, for we too have sinned. On this Good Friday, we unite with millions of believers from every tribe, tongue, and nation. We cry out in the name of Jesus with one voice, Heavenly Father, by your mercy and grace, may the COVID-19 pandemic be removed from the nations of our world. May your name be glorified in the sight of the nations by a miraculous deliverance of such power that the peoples of the world are left in awe and wonder. And may your spirit comfort and renew the hearts of those who have experienced loss in this time. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want us to close with a time of reflection and song. I don't know about anybody else, but I have put my hope in Jesus. And I am so thankful that as a result of his sacrifice, I'm washed in his blood and my sins are forgiven. Let us worship him together, and we'll see you on Easter Sunday.
Showed me the way, and that's why I say. 